Welcome to English with Afreen. In this listening test, you will hear a number of different recordings and you will have to answer questions on what you hear. There will be time for you to read the instructions and questions, and you will have a chance to check your work. All the recordings will be played once only. The test is in four sections. At the end of the test, you'll be given 10 minutes to transfer your answers to an answer sheet. Now, turn to section 1. Section 1, you will hear a conversation between Louise and librarian about how to join a video library. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 5. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 1 to 5. Oh, hello. I'd like to join the video library. Okay. Would you like to fill in the application form now? Yes, I can do it now. Hold on and I'll get a form. Now, I'll just ask you a few questions and then I'll get you to sign at the bottom. Right. What's your full name? Louise Cynthia Jones. Jones. Yes, that's right. Okay, and what's your address? Apartment 172 Black Street, Highbridge. Black Street, that's just around the corner, isn't it? Yes. Okay, so the postcode is 2085, right? Yes, 2085. Okay, and your telephone number? I need both home and work. Home is 9835671212 and work is 9456130009. Do you need any ID or anything like that? Yes, we need your driver's license number. That is if you have one. Yes, one know if off by heart. It's an easy one. 2020BD. Do you need to see it? Yes, I'm afraid I do. Here it is. Right, thanks. And could you tell me your date of birth, please? The 25th of July, 1977. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 6 to 10. Now, listen and answer questions 6 to 10. Okay, now, that's the most important part out of the way. But can I just ask you a few questions for a survey we're conducting? Okay. What kind of videos do you prefer to watch? Have a look at this list. Well, I love anything that makes me laugh. I just love to hear jokes and funny punchlines. I'm not very keen on westerns, although my father likes them, but I'm a real softy, so anything with a bit of a love story is good for me. It doesn't matter how old. Not musicals, though. They're too much. Anything else? I'm completely taken by documentaries of the great outdoors. You know the sort. Animals, plants, and faraway places. One saw a wonderful one on dolphins last week. It was amazing. Now, I think that's all from me, except I need you to sign here on the line. Here's a pen. Oh, and I nearly forgot the membership fee. $25 refundable if you leave the library for any reason. There you are. And do I sign here? Yes, that's it. You can borrow videos now if you like, but your card won't be ready until next week. You can come and pick it up when you bring your first videos back. That is if you want to take some now. Yes, I'd like to. I'll have a look around. Fine. That is the end of section one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section two. In section two, you will hear a speech from a tour guide called Zanat about a boat trip around the Tasmanian coast. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 14. Now listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 14. So, hello everyone. My name's Zanat. 
and I'm going to be your tour guide today as we take this fantastic boat trip around the Tasmanian coast. Before we set off, I just want to tell you a few things about our journey. Our boats aren't huge as you can see. We already have three staff members on board. And on top of that, we can transport a further 15 people, that's you, around the coastline. But please note if there are more than nine people on either side of the boat. We'll move some of you over, otherwise, all 18 of us will end up in the sea. We've recently upgraded all our boats. They used to be jet black, but our new ones now have these comfortable dark red seats and a light green exterior in order to stand out from others and help promote our company. This gives our boats a rather unique appearance, don't you think? We offer you a free lunchbox during the trip, and we have three types. Lunchbox 1 contains ham and tomato sandwiches. Lunchbox 2 contains a cheddar cheese roll, and Lunchbox 3 is salad-based, and also contains eggs and tuna. All three lunchboxes also have a packet of crisps and chocolate bars inside. Please let staff know which lunchbox you prefer. I'm sure I don't have to ask you not to throw anything into the sea. We don't have any bins to put litter in, but Jess, myself, or Ray, our other guide, will collect it from you after lunch and put it all in a large plastic sack. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 15 to 20. Now, listen and answer questions, 15 to 20. The engine on the boat makes quite a lot of noise. So before we head off, let me tell you a few things about what you're going to see. This area is famous for its ancient lighthouse, which you'll see from the boat as we turn past the first little island. It was built in 1838 to protect sailors, as a number of shipwrecks had led to significant loss of life. The construction itself was complicated as some of the original drawings kept by the local council show. It sits right on top of the cliffs in a very isolated spot. In the 19th century, there were many jobs there, such as polishing the brass lamps, chopping firewood, and cleaning windows that kept lighthouse keepers busy. These workers were mainly prison convicts until the middle of that century when ordinary families willing to live in such circumstances took over. Some of you have asked me what creatures we can expect to see. I know everyone loves the penguins, but they're very shy and, unfortunately, tend to hide from passing boats. But you might see birds in the distance, such as sea eagles, flying around the cliff edges where they nest. When we get to the rocky area inhabited by fur seals, we'll stop and watch them swimming around the coast. They're inquisitive creatures, so don't be surprised if one pops up right in front of you. Their predators, orca whales, hunt along the coastline too, but spotting one of these is rare. Dolphins, on the other hand, can sometimes approach on their own, or in groups as they ride the waves beside us. Lastly, I want to mention the caves. Tasmania is famous for its caves, and the ones we'll pass by are so amazing that people are lost for words when they see them. They can only be approached by sea, but if you feel that you want to see more than we're able to show you, then you can take a kayak into the area on another day, and one of our staff will give you more information on that. What we'll do is go through a narrow channel, past some incredible rock formations, and from there we'll be able to see the openings to the caves, and at that point, we'll talk to you about what lies beyond. That is the end of section 2. You now have half a minute to check your answers.
Now turn to Section 3. Section 3. You will hear two new students, Jane and Tim, talking about their university studies. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 25. Now listen carefully and answer questions, 21 to 25. Hi Tim, how are you? I've been wondering when I'd run into you. Have you been here long? I arrived yesterday, on Sunday. How about you? I got here a few days ago, on Saturday. No, wait a minute, what's today? Sorry, Friday, not Saturday. But we didn't have to be here till today. Yes, I know, but I wanted to get my things moved into my room and just take a look around. So, did you decide to do English in the end? No, I changed my mind and opted for history instead, and you're doing biology, if I remember correctly. Yes, although to start with I couldn't decide between that and geography. How much reading have you got? I was given an amazingly long list of books to read. See? Wow, it does look pretty long. Well, I counted 57. I could hardly believe it. What's your list like? Well, it's not as long as yours, but it's still pretty big. There are 43. I don't know how I'm going to get through them all. Well, you don't have to read them all this week. You just have to stay ahead of the lectures and seminars. Have you got your class schedule yet? Yep. It came with the reading list. When's your first lecture? Tuesday. How about you? The day after. It's my busiest day. I've got two lectures in the morning and one in the afternoon. Before you hear the rest of the discussion, you'll have some time to look at questions 26 to 30. Now, listen and answer questions 26 to 30. It's going to be different from school, isn't it? Yeah, particularly the lectures. Have you got any special strategy for listening to lectures? Well, I'm going to use a cassette recorder and record them all. What? Are you allowed to? Sure. Lots of people do it nowadays. It means you can listen to the lectures all over again later and make really good notes. I couldn't do that. I like to take notes as I'm listening. I usually find I get all the important points. Reading is different, of course. My approach is to skim the book first to see what's important and what isn't. It saves hours of time. But what if you miss something? You don't mean you're going to read every word, do you? Well, that's what I usually do. Well, that's up to you, but I think you're crazy. What's your first lecture on, anyway? Oh, it's a lecture on the French Revolution. The French Revolution. How boring. It's not boring at all. It was an amazing period of history. It changed everything in Europe. So what's your first lecture about? It's about animal behavior. It sounds really interesting. Look, I was on my way to the library. I'm going to get some of these books out and start reading for the first essay I've got to write. And what have you got to write about? Well, you'll never believe it. I think our professor must have a sense of humor. He's given us the title, Why Study History? That's a good one. When you find the answer, let me know. I'm going to enjoy writing it. Have you been given any writing assignments yet? Yes, I've got to write about animal language. Hmm, that sounds a challenge. I suppose you'll be off to the zoo to do field research. That is the end of section 3. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section 4. Section 4, you will hear a student giving a presentation about a project on household waste. Recycling. First you have some time to look at questions, 31 to 40.
Now listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. Well, my group has been doing a project on how household waste is recycled in Britain. We were quite shocked to discover that only 9% of people here in the UK make an effort to recycle their household waste. This is a lower figure than in most other European countries and needs to increase dramatically in the next few years. If the government is going to meet its recycling target, the agreed targets for the UK mean by 2025, we must reduce our carbon dioxide emissions by 12.5% compared with 2015, and recycling can help to achieve that goal. In two main ways, the production of recycled glass and paper uses much less energy than producing them from virgin material, and also recycling reduces greenhouse gas emissions from landfill sites and incineration plans. As part of our project, we carried out a survey of people in the street, and the thing that came up over and over again is that people don't think it's easy enough to recycle their waste. One problem is that there aren't enough drop-off sites, that is the places where the public are supposed to take their waste. We also discovered that waste that's collected from householders is taken to places called bring banks for sorting and bailing into loads. One problem here is taking out everything that shouldn't have been placed in the recycling containers. People put all sorts of things into bottle banks, like plastic bags and even broken umbrellas. All this has to be removed by hand. Another difficulty is that toughened glass used for cooking doesn't fully melt at the temperature required for other glass, and so that also has to be picked out by hand. Glass is easy to recycle because it can be reused over and over again without becoming weaker. Two million tons of glass is thrown away each year. That is 7 billion bottles and jars, but only 500,000 tons of that is collected and recycled. Oddly enough, half the glass that's collected is green, and a lot of that is imported. So more green glass is recycled than the UK needs. As a result, new uses are being developed for recycled glass, particularly green glass. For example, in fiberglass manufacture and water filtration, a company called CLF, aggregates makes a product for roads and 30% of the material is crushed glass. For recycling paper, Britain comes second in Europe with 40%, behind Germany's amazing 70%. When recycling started, there were quality problems, so it was difficult to use recycled paper in office printers, but these problems have now been solved. And Martin's based in South London, produces a range of office stationery, which is 100% recycled, costs the same as normal paper and is of equally high quality. But this high quality comes at a cost in terms of the waste produced during the process. Over a third of the waste paper that comes in can't be used in the recycled paper, leaving the question of what to do with it. One firm paper safe currently sells this to farmers as a soil conditioner, though this practice will soon be banned because of transport costs and the smell. And the company is looking into the possibility of alternative uses. Plastic causes problems because there are so many different types of plastic in use today and each one has to be dealt with differently pack, right? Recycles all sorts of things from bottles to car bumpers. And one of its most successful activities is recycling plastic bottles to make containers, which are used all over the country to collect waste. The Save a Cup scheme was set up by the vending in plastics industries to recycle as many as possible of the three and a half billion polystyrene cups used each year. At the moment, 500 million poly cups are collected processed, and sold on to other businesses such as Waterford, which turns the cups into pencils, and Johnson & Jones, a Welch-based firm, which has developed a wide variety of items, including business cards. Well, to sum up, there seems to be plenty of research going on into how to reuse materials, but the biggest problem is getting people to think about recycling instead of throwing things away, at least doing the research made us much more careful. That is the end of section 4. You now have half a minute to check your answers. That is the end of the listening test. You would now have 10 minutes to transfer your answers to the listening answer sheet.
If you score 1 to 18, you are unlikely to get an acceptable score under examination conditions, and we recommend that you spend a lot of time improving your English before you take IELTS. If you score 19 to 27, you may get an acceptable score under examination conditions, but we recommend that you think about having more practice or lessons before you take IELTS. If you score 28 to 40, you are likely to get an acceptable score under examination conditions, but remember that different institutions will find different scores acceptable. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. We really appreciate it.